welcome to Makers on Tap, the podcast where makerspace directors drink and talk about making stuff. Tonight, you've got me, Joe, as your host with Christian and Aaron, the only director left. <laughs> All right. So this is part two of uh, our, our two part series in uh, um, complaining. I don't know. In what? In complaining. Yeah, I guess. I, sure. Un, uh, unrealistic expectations. Unreal. There you go. Unrealistic expectations. Part two. <laughs> Going to have to rename that first episode. All right. So tonight we are talking about um, something that I'm sure a lot of technical and creative people have felt where people have unreal expectations of you and your skills and your time and how you should uh, give them to them. Yeah. It's a good way of putting it. So, uh, you know, this could be anything from like somebody expecting you to work for exposure, or oh, <laughs> that's a <laughs> I just, fucking word. Sorry, I'm going to go right off nerve. the bat. Yep, this is an explicit one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you think back to the Sherpa episode, this is probably going to be a little bit like that for me and Chris. Yeah. Um, maybe Aaron too. Uh, so yeah, people expecting you to work for exposure, people just expecting you to give your experience freely, um, you know, whatever, where somebody comes to you and just expects you to give everything that you've worked so hard for up just because they, they want it, you know? Yeah. So that, that's, that's kind of going to be the topic tonight. Um, we're going to skip right past the news sections just because this is going to be a fairly long episode. But before we dive into that, what are you guys drinking? Uh, I am still going on my, uh, my zombie dust. I am still going through about two bottles of that. So if you listen last time, uh, yep, still on it. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> I also have the industry nightcap again because that's my go to when I go there. Yeah, absolutely. And then I am finally finishing off my new Glarus sampler with the new Glarus stone soup, which mm. on the bottle says it's an Abbey ale with clove and ginger hints. To me, it smells and tastes a whole lot like a Hefeweizen, which is banana beer and is one of my favorites. So, yeah. Banana beer is always good. Banana Absolutely. Beer. Banana beer. If you couldn't tell, we're a couple drinks in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys want to, either of you want to start us off? Or should we, or should I dive in? Um. Yeah. Why don't you take the, take the first part? All right. So, um, a real common one that people have for me, and it's one that um, I, I've recently had a lot of trouble with, is uh, where somebody asks me to help them with a project. And normally I am all for helping anyone who needs help. Mm -hmm. um, but they they say like, hey, Joe, I've got this project that I need to do and I need um this task done and this task done and you're the person I thought of. And a lot of times they're fairly simple tasks or, you know, it's something where I needed to come over for a couple hours and help them out. And you know, if I have time, I'm probably going to say yes, because I like helping people along and I, I like trying to make things easier for them. And then they just fall off the face of the planet for two, three months, maybe a year. And then out of nowhere, they're like, hey, are you ever going to come help me with that? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I guess like my whole life's different now. I, I don't really have time to commit four or five hours to your project, um, you know, potentially longer, depending on how long your post support's going to be, because it's never just the one thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so. So then it, it's I'm juggling all my current commitments, but trying to also fulfill this other commitment. And I'm to the point with some of it where I'm just I'm debating if it's even worth 
fulfilling the initial commitment because you know it wasn't worth it to them it, it kind of feels like a disrespect on my time like i told you yes months ago and then you you didn't have time for me to help you then so maybe i don't know i don't know have you guys ever ever dealt with something like that uh yeah no absolutely um there's there's a couple cases that come to mind with me um especially with this topic that one in particular where it's been like hey do you mind helping and i'm like yeah sure um and then several months later was um i had this um this charity organization this nonprofit that had asked me to do an installation of security cameras um and they were like, hey, can you come in, run networking wires, do all this? And I was like, yeah, no, that's fine. And the main reason I was fine with it was because they were in the middle of remodels. And I was like, yeah, perfect. That, that's the time. <laughs> I'll, I'll do this. I'll get it knocked out. And um, we'll, we'll get this knocked out in like a couple days. Like it'll be, it'll be totally cool. I was like, just give me a call when studs are in and um, before drywalls go up. So that way I can I can run all cabling, and get all that done. I don't get a call for six, seven months later. Good and Lord. they're like, oh, hey, man. hey, we're finally ready for you to come in and do that. And I go, wow, that took a while for them to do maybe financing run through or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. No, I come in. Uh, there's they're they're moved in like uh, there is stuff mm-hmm. in everywhere drywalls are completely up insulation is put in like everything's done and they're like yeah yeah we uh we 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 need to know which one to buy we need to know how much cabling to get i'm like are you fucking kidding me like (laughs) you just took this job and made it hell harder and it like they expected me to do it for free because they were a not-for-profit And they're like, oh, well, you're you're doing this out of the good of your own heart, aren't you? Like, you want to see us <laughs> succeed. Like, and I'm less like, you know, if I I would have, I would have a hundred percent done it, and I still ended up doing it, which was a whole nother thing. But I a hundred percent would have done it on my own time and in the correct time that I said I could do it, which was when they were in the middle of remodels. Had I done that, like I said, would have taken three days top to put all the cameras in. Get the rack mounted, get all of it connected, and it would have been fine. But they wanted to do it on their own time, and they didn't take into consideration anything that I was saying. And just yeah. later on, they're like, "No, no, he he said he could do it. He said he would be he would help us. So let's just call him up now." And it's like, "No, no, 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 no." <laughs> but it 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 goes in because it goes to show that just so many people take for granted your knowledge and your expertise that they just completely overlook that kind of stuff. And it seems to be the people that want things cheap are always the most demanding people Mm. and the most picky people. Mm -hmm. Like it's never like, Oh, well he didn't charge us for this. So um, yeah, we're going to overlook the scratch that he did on the wall or we're going to overlook this or we're going to let this, you know, this bad cable run that's kind of ugly slide. Like they're always super nitpicky and I I don't know. I ah, it makes it really hard to want to keep doing things like that. <laughs> no, it absolutely there's a whole subreddit for that. Called Is there choosing, really? It's called Choosing Beggars. Oh, uh, uh, that is such a great title too. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, and it's mostly just craigslist ads where people like hey you're you're selling an xbox right uh it I, i'm buying one for my son but i only have 20 bucks can i give you 20 bucks and it's like 200 bucks and like, oh, well. and when they say no they're like oh well, how do you feel ruining my son's christmas <laughs> ruining some kid's christmas how do you how's it make you feel yep that's the entire subreddit no oh, ma'am <laughs> dude like that is the entirety uh, sorry, before we even got into this, I was like, I'm going to rant on this one because this is something that I've dealt with uh, way too much. Um, 
if we go, if you have listened to a couple of our episodes, which we have noticed, um, people are listening. Hey, thank you for listening. Uh, and one we of our have listeners. Yeah. We do. <laughs> um, There's a reason we're doing this. <laughs> we're not just yelling into the void. <laughs> right. One of our, one of our bigger episodes, uh, was the one that we keep referring to was the Sherpa episode. Um, mm-hmm. where we, we just went off on, on past experiences. Um, I actually never told the second half of that entire story. So if you remember back, if you're actually, I'll give the cliff notes version, which was, I was contracted to do this job. Um, the job was to go out and do a week long shoot and I was supposed to have a 40 minute video done by the end of, or no, it was originally a two hour video. I cut it down to 40 minutes. Um, and I was supposed to have that done over the course of a week while I was shooting during that week. And I was supposed to edit during the nights. What oh I never God. said about the second F of that episode, because I went back and I listened, I totally forgot about this, was they tried to make me do it for free. I'll say that again, for free. And they, on the other How side of it... they pay you? Uh, they paid me nothing. They actually, on the other end of that... What I got out of it was a refurbed MacBook Pro from 2009. It God was damn. 2012. <laughs> nice. I didn't even care the year. Just a MacBook. It, That's yeah. yeah. That was all they gave me. They're like, oh well, we have this refurbed MacBook because one of our guys was upgrading his. We can give you that. And I'm like, fine. I will try and sell this. And just like, I will try and get rid of it to get some kind of payment out of this. Never ended up getting any money out of it because it was a reefer MacBook Pro from 2009 with only four gigs of RAM. So, oh man, yeah, <laughs> this, this I'm, whole deal, it like, but it was because, and this is, um, in particular, this non for profit thought that they were doing something so charitable. Um, and that they had special circumstances that they could just do that for free. And I'm not going to name the name of it. I'm not going to be an asshole like that. I'm really not. But this organization in particular very much thought that they were under a righteous cause and thought, oh, well, you're doing this for us out of the grace of your own heart. And you should be content with that. You And it was like, no, like I had to take a week off of work. For me being able to make my payments, my rent, my everything, and at that time I was working as a theater usher um, to be able to get by with my rent and everything. I was like, I just took a week off to do this, and you're not planning on paying me? Like, And they're like, oh, Man. well, we just expected you were going to do it for us. And it's like, no. No. I, I work for these skills. I went to school for these skills. And I it, like my expertise costs me money. And so I should be able to get some kind of compensation. Out. It literally took me holding the video hostage because they wanted to show it in front of a group of about, uh, it was like, I say it's like 300 people. Um, they wanted to show it in front of this. I had the only copy. And so I literally was like, no, like if this is the point where it's come to where you agreed to pay me and now you're trying to back out, you want to get this video. I need some kind of compensation. And I had to just withhold everything. So they agreed to pay you up front, though? They did. Before you before you yeah. started, you were getting paid. Wow. So there was a okay. verbal agreement before. So this is what started me doing contracts. Oh, man. There's there a was, lesson. Yep. There was a verbal <laughs> agreement beforehand. And it was between four of us. And one of the guys tried to back out. And the other two still said that I was in the right. But this guy was the actual guy who was going to cut the check. And he just refused to cut it. And... Even to that day, he wouldn't cut a check for money. He just gave me a refurb MacBook Pro. And that's that was all I got out of that. And that was that was what burned me out so much on doing any type of charitable work was just like they just they don't care. They have yeah. no expectation or no reality of what's actually happening because they didn't yeah. do it. Like if I were to ask something in their field, they'd be like, oh no, that takes that takes hours, that takes researches, takes all this kind of stuff. But they don't have the same expectation for you doing your own work. And that's what I feel like with so many people. It's like I had um, I had somebody contract me to possibly do a website. Um, and this person was like just a friend of a friend. Um, and so they come out and they had this list of all – they wanted to integrate marketplace which this was before 
Squarespace. This was before WordPress. So I was editing in HTML, not HTML5, HTML with a CSS, a PH or PHP, and all of that kind of mail clients and all that stuff. I <laughs> was <fun>. editing this. <laughs> and no. so like he has like I all of this stuff to like, hey, this is all the stuff that I want to do on this. And I go, I can do this, but you're looking at a cost of me doing this, not only up front, but you're also looking up a monthly cost for me maintaining this because I'm going to have to actually maintain this server. And what? He, yeah, he went off. He was like, we were in a restaurant. He actually went off on me. He was like, oh, I thought you were a friend of, and I, 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 I thought you were a friend of Rick's. I thought you were going to help me out. Like, I can't believe this. Like, you were supposed to be doing this for, for me as a favor. For, and I was like, do you not realize, like, all the stuff that goes into this? Like, I'm trying to explain all of this. And I tried to hold my composure, and I, I think I did a good job, but who knows? Past is the past. But he, mm -hmm. like, people just have this unrealistic expectation of, oh, well, you can just do this. Like, you, this is what you do in your free time. Like, yeah. it's, it's no issue for you. And nine times out of ten, they're right. I'm doing a website for a group now that's taking me, like, all of my free time. And it's like, no, nah, that's fun for me. Like, I, this website's fine. Like, I don't mind. But it's like, if you have the unrealistic expectation to expect that of me, that I yeah. will do this for you, and there everything's on you, and you're like, you want, you want exactly what you want, and you're just expecting it of me, that's where I have an issue. That's where things starting to come into play of like, no, this is not good. Yeah, and... One key difference with that website that you're making now, they didn't actually ask you to make it. Yes. I, I actually volunteered to make that. Um, yeah. They that's were a key thing. Difference. Yeah. That's a key <laughs> thing. You now, volunteered your time. <laughs> I will say so as much as... your fault. Yeah. No, yeah. I will say as much as I love these guys, I did volunteer. They are now getting very picky on things they want to. <laughs> And I well, love them. I love them to death. But it, like, welcome to web development. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate it. It's so much I, I, fun. <laughs> I think you should be uh, picky about the people that are being picky about the things on the website. Because mm. uh, yeah, <laughs> the, peop the people that matter aren't going to be picky. Um, so there's a really, really excellent flowchart that I just sent you guys in our Slack uh, that. I absolutely love it. And um, it's called Should I Work for Free? And uh, it, it starts out in the middle. It says, should I work for free? And the first four questions are, is it for a legitimate business? Is it for a charity or nonprofit? Is it for your mom? And is it for a friend? And very, very <laughs> rarely uh, is there a yes at the end. And when there are yeses, is... The only one that is directly to a yes is, is it for your mom? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I love the response. 22 hours later and you can't do one goddamn garage sale flyer? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Even then. I've done so much computer stuff for my mom. Yeah. I mean, uh, dude, but the that, amount of times I've wiped that. her computer and set up that yeah. fucking router, there, there is almost a point where I'm like, Hey, I need some kind of compensation. <laughs> like at oh, least yeah. make me dinner. <laughs> Pro tip, Chris. You just buy him a Chromebook. Dude, Chromebook. that's what they're on. That's, that's, that's the best. She, she, she gets did. viruses on a Chromebook. I don't know that's how. A, that, <laughs> that's impossible. That, yeah. Huh. I don't know. I don't How's know. Possible. <laughs> anyway, I end up having to right. wipe that thing. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I have had zero issues with my parents since I bought them a Chromebook and I got them a little Chrome box. For like a desktop. No nice. issues. No yeah. issues. It's been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one of the other things I really love is, is this for a charity or nonprofit? Yes. Do you mean a band? <laughs> uh, oh, yes. No, just because a business isn't profitable doesn't make them a nonprofit. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite quote from the whole poster. Oh, man. No, that's... uh. That's pretty great. I love that. <laughs> All right. So getting back on the topic, the next type of person that really frustrates me in the I 
I need your skills uh, world is the person who makes demands on your time. Yeah. The, the person that comes up to you and tries to intimidate you into helping them or doing any sort of work for them or being their computer IT support or whatever. Anyone who is demanding your time is going to become exactly that demanding on your time. Yeah. And that is a toxic relationship, no matter who it is. Like, does that include my wife? Uh, I am not here to give you marriage advice. Harry. <laughs> this is a tech or maker podcast, not a marriage podcast. Because it sounds like my wife. I, you kind of agreed to that when when you <laughs> went to that isn't, one party that you paid a lot of money to throw for other people. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't that involved in the uh, uh, for better or for worse for Wi-Fi or for LAN? <laughs> yes, yes, man, that should have been in my marriage vows. Um, so it, I've, I've had a couple people at the Makerspace try to intimidate me into helping them with projects or like they they've asked me to do something and I just I frankly I just don't want to do it and a lot of times I'm too nice to just come out and be like no I'm not helping you with this because I think it's dumb or I I just don't I don't want to so but I'm really nice about like how I put it off usually very passive person and and then they come up and they're like when are you going to help me yeah, and they like try to bully me into it, and that is the wrong way to get me to help you with something. Yeah. I, the minute you try to bully me into something, we're done. I, I'm never helping you with something again, <laughs> and, and that that's born out of personal boundaries that I've had to create with certain people. Like, I I've let people do that to me enough that now, um, just for my own mental well being, I just can't let people do that to me anymore, and. You know, for new makers and people that are diving into this, people that are getting 3D printers or people that are starting to get good with web development, like those people are going to come to you and they're going to try to get you to work for free. And just don't like yeah. from the outset. You know, I, I, I now am in a position where I have um, certain people you know, profiting off of my ideas and my advice and things. And you know, to a certain point, I'm fine with it because they're, they've become friends and I, I support their businesses and that's why I still take their phone calls. But, you know, at the same point, like sometimes I wonder like, you know, should I be charging a consulting fee for this stuff? Because they're, they're profiting off of my knowledge that we talked about this in the last episode. I spent years gaining and you guys have spent years and money and time and tears and sometimes blood gaining these skills that other people are now profiting off of. So and much blood. So much blood. Man, I one of my fingers has a messed up fingerprint from the time I planed my fingertip off. Like, you know, and that that's stuff that like I've gained over the years. Like, don't run your don't run your finger across the planer. Seems like common sense, but <laughs> Yeah, when you're tired, you have to test it. Um, <laughs> Fuck. Don't run a planer when you haven't slept in 36 hours. That's the real lesson. I mean, I think <laughs> <laughs> it's it, there's always there there's always a really easy way for me to be able to tell at least, and I'm I'm curious for you guys um, what you guys say. But for me, there's always a really easy way for me to be able to judge if I'm going to be able to help somebody. Um, Hang on, let me finish this one thought. Yeah, go, go, go. Oh, sorry. I... When people like that come to you, just start the conversation with, I can't say no money. Like, I that is my best advice I can I can say. Like, give them yeah. an hourly number that will that you will help them for that you just can't say no to. You know, whether it's fifty bucks an hour or one hundred and fifty bucks an hour, if they really need that help. And that project's really worth it to them. You know, maybe you can benefit a little bit to them too. And they'll think twice about trying to bully you into it because you stood up for yourself. You know, whether you're actually expecting that money or you actually want to do the work for that money, you're valuing yourself, which instantly changes the conversation. Yeah. 
And I think that's really, really important. It's something I've learned over the last year and a half of, um, you know, being the president of the makerspace and just stretching myself too thin is like my time is incredibly valuable. And if you're going to get any of it, it's going to cost you uh, because it's cost me to give up so much. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Right. Sorry to interrupt you, Chris. No, I no, no. I that part out. Um, it kind of like I, I'm kind of tagging off that for me. There is sometimes there will be instances in which I do want to help somebody. Um, and it, there, oh yeah, totally. there may be um somebody who comes up and they they're they're asking for my help, and I'm like, yeah, I I want to help you. I want to be able to actually do this. But I for me, and I'm, this is where I'm curious if you guys have something like this. There's always a test that I have, um, to basically see. Am I going to be doing this project for them or are they actually wanting to do this? And that's that I make them go watch um, for special effects. I have a certain YouTube series um, that I send people. Oh, excuse me. That I send people to. Um, it's called Video Copilot. Uh, the channel is hosted by Andrew Kramer, uh, one of the best freaking visual effects artists in the industry he actually got a start in youtube and is now working for jj abrams um nice yeah nice. no dude's like nice. incredible um he was doing like meteor crashes in your garage uh and now he did the whole special effects intro for uh into darkness uh um, you sent me his channel before i did so that is that is my test if you want me to help you watch these tell me about this and then I am amped because that shows that you're willing to put the work in to learn a little bit of yourself. I yes. just want you to show yes. me that you're willing to learn a little bit. That's it. Doesn't have to be a huge amount. I understand. It's a huge undertaking. It took me years to learn all of the things that I've learned when it comes to special effects, video editing, audio editing, all of this stuff. It took me years. I'm not expecting you to learn that in a weekend. But if you show me that you're willing mm-hmm. to actually take the effort and learn a little bit, then that means that I'm willing to actually work with you because at the end of this, you're going to learn and you're going to be able to actually work on your own after this. And that's what I want. I want you to be self-sustaining after this. If, yep. if I'm in a situation where I want to be able to teach you, that's, that's the way I teach you. And I'm curious, do you guys have something like that? Almost exactly like that. I send people to either YouTube channels or forums. It just depends on the task. And I, I'm like, you know, go read this. These these are the things that you should maybe take out of it. You know, and come back and talk to me about it. Um, you know, if they can put out that tiny amount of effort, that instantly makes me more willing to put more effort into them. Because, you know, that's... Like like we've talked about before, this is all about value and time and value. So, yeah. you know, if they're willing to commit some of their time to learn a little bit on their own, that 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 simply shows that they're willing to to learn. It's it's the whole monk method, you know. Yeah, we did this with the early days in the makerspace. We, people would show up to our meetups and we just wouldn't talk to them. And uh, you know, they would either bully their way into a conversation or come for a couple of weeks and not get talked to. And then, uh, you know, after that we'd go talk to them, <laughs> but you know, in the early, in the early days, we really wanted to make sure we had the right people. And, um, very often none of us knew any of the new people. So, and we didn't go out of our way to make it super welcoming. We had, we made sure that people that wanted it were there. So, uh, but like, you know, with what you just said, I, I've had projects, I, I have projects right now where people have been coming to me for six months and saying, you know, I need you to do this. And I say, all right, to get that done, I need you to buy this thing and bring it to me on this night at the makerspace. And then buy this thing and then send me the email and I'll go pick it up because you don't have a truck. For six months. <laughs> None of the things are expensive and they're critical to the success of the project. And for six months, every other week or so, I get an email or a text like I'm getting really stressed out about this project. It's really freaking me out that I don't have this done. And I say, "Okay, all you got to do is bring me 
that one thing and then send me the email that says that you paid for this so I can go pick it up. Mm. And then it can get done. And for six months, they haven't been able to put out that effort. I have no interest in putting out the amount of effort that I have to do to get all the other stuff done that I'm going to do for free. No, I'm just I'm just not going to do it. Like if you right. if you can't do the easy things, I'm not going to do the hard things for you. Oh, God. <sighs> yeah, so working in IT, I learned something <laughs> really early where everybody knows you're the computer guy and they want you, to, oh, will you do this for a living or no, this is fun for you, so it's no big deal. Or it no, no, I do this for a living. People pay me to do it. Five or ten minutes. And, <laughs> yep. You know, I learned this early on, um, and at the time, it's not. I didn't really value my time. It just got to the point where I just stopped agreeing to fix things mm-hmm. because whether or not it's just me actually fixing something, um, or if it's me fixing something, then months down the road, I get blamed for something that they did, but because I had touched it at one point, it's clearly my fault. Yeah. yeah. So it, I, I've just now got to the point where I'm just done fixing it, things. That was what? a really big thing in car audio too. People would be like, yeah. you put a stereo in my car six months ago and now it doesn't start right. And I'm like, if it was my problem, it just wouldn't have started to begin with. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. And that, I mean, you also bring up a really good point of, um, Let's just take it at the base of value of like you get paid to do this. So it, me and Aaron both work in IT and mechanics. Um, personally, I work more in mechanics than I do in IT, but I do work in IT. Joe, you work in IT as well with uh, designing and manufacturing and all that kind of stuff. So all three of us, I know, get that question of like, hey, can you come look at this for me? Or hey, can you mm-hmm. can you look at my network or something like that? Just just imagine you getting paid for that time because like I there's one that comes to mind where it was just friend of friend. They asked me to come look over at their computer and their setup and I probably spent probably four hours over there. I don't want to say what I get paid because that upsets some people Um, and I don't think I can technically say what I get paid um, per my company guidelines. Um, probably upset me. Well, <laughs> I, I, I can I can tell you what I value myself as a maker, which yeah. is about fifty to seventy dollars an hour, depending on what I'm doing, or five hundred dollars a day. Yeah, it, it it just depends on the project that I'm doing. So let's say low value, that was two hundred dollars of your time. Exactly. So when you put it in perspective like that, it's just like. I just wasted $200 just to come over here and you're not even grateful. Like I've had that stuff where it's just like, well, this is what you need to do. And it's like, well, I thought you could just make it work. I was like, no, this one in particular, it was they wanted their kid's computer to work better and they wanted them to be able to play games. And specifically, I think they were trying to play Fallout 4. Um at the time. I think that's what they were trying to play. And so I was like, okay, well, that's pretty easy. Let me take a look at your computer. And I spec'd it out pretty well. I, I cleaned it all up. I got a lot of the processors or processes running a lot better. There was just some junk on there. I was able to clear it up. Um, I had a spare, uh, SSD on me. So I threw that in there and just like, I was able to get them back up and running on a better basis. But I was like, really, when it comes down to this, you need a better graphics card. And you need a little bit more RAM in here before you actually are able to run something as good as Fallout 4. Um, and like, well, can't you just make it work? It's like, no. Like, you need to put money into it to make it actually work well. Well, that doesn't make sense. Like, it should. It's a computer. It should just be able to work. Like, you no. you work on stuff. Like you. And I go, yeah. When I encounter this problem at work, I order new parts. Like, I can't just make things manifest better. Like. And then they get all ungrateful. And it's like, well, I just wasted $200. And the person I wasted that $200 on freaking is ungrateful about it. You're not a very good conjurer if you can't make something manifest better. Um, yeah. I, I got to work on my dark your, hearts. Your <laughs> magic. Conjure better, man. Yeah, and that wasn't even your friend, right? That was a friend of a friend. Yeah. No, it, you, was, yeah. it was... Um, he was... He was given the... Uh, 
his kid a birthday present and he oh, got okay. this refurbed computer off eBay or something like that. And he was trying to get it to run that. So it, it was a whole thing of like, I didn't even know this person and they were asking <sighs> me for my help. And I was just like, I don't know what's done. Like, and I that's can't so explain. Rough <laughs> when like, A, they didn't understand the expectations to begin with. They had unrealistic expectations of what they got. Yep. And then they're disappointing somebody that they care about. Like, that's like, a, that's a whole mountain of disappointment. Ah. Oh yeah. No. Nope. No. And, and then you're in. You're in the center of it. Of like. Oh well, you're the reason. Because, I, and I love this, especially. Um, they'll they'll contact. So in this particular case, he contacted the eBay seller before he bought it and was like, "Will this be able to play Fallout Four and like all these high end games and blah blah blah?" blah. Um, I'm getting this for my son, and the seller said yes. And the seller did. was a fucking liar. <laughs> um, of course he did. But he like, like, like my wife at any restaurant. Like, hey, is this good? <laughs> is this <laughs> good? <laughs> well, you know, the wait the waiter isn't gonna say no. Right. Well, and sometimes. That, <laughs> <laughs> but that's it, like that was this whole thing of like he 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 got this unrealistic expectation and he didn't know me from the seller and I'm coming in and being like, You need all of these things and he's like well, I thought this was going to be all like I needed and you were just going to come over here and fix it. And it's like, no, <laughs> I did the best I could. Like, that's all I can do. I Yeah. And it's not like you were the seller of the computer parts. I could see mm-hmm. like him getting that frustrated if he went to a computer store and they were like, hey, this computer's not good. But, yeah, you, know, you put this $200 graphics card in and $100 in RAM and you'll be good to go. And he feels like he's trying to be upsold. But yep. you're just like a dude that's not benefiting from this. But, you know, like I said, he was he was frustrated because he was going to disappoint his kid or whatever. So, yeah, ugh, those are situations I just don't want to get involved in. No. And uh, that's a whole thing of just like pick and choose your situations carefully. That flow chart, as funny as it is, man, that might as well actually be posted in my house because frick. <laughs> Yeah, yeah we, you you can buy prints of this flow chart, and I've seriously thought about buying one for the makerspace for as often a, as the makerspace gets asked to do work for free. Good and it, Lord. Man, it's oh, never dude. easy. Right? You guys, I Chris, you were around. A couple of years mm-hmm. ago, the, somebody called the makerspace, and people always confuse the makerspace for like an engineering firm. Yep. Just, just because that there's a bunch of engineers farm. there. <laughs> I get, I kind of get 3D printing firm, whatever, but like the engineering firm thing, we're, yeah. like, we're, we're really trying to, um, a couple of years ago, a group called us to work on a, um, a war memorial that was getting installed in oh, Peoria. Yeah, I remember and this. <laughs> man, the, that was a thing. Yeah, that was a thing. They had custom aluminum extrusions that didn't get extruded to spec properly. So then they had yep. these huge aluminum plates that had been machined with pockets to accept the extrusions and the, extru- the pockets weren't right. And they couldn't get me a real CAD model. They could just get me a PDF print. So we were going <laughs> off of that. And then, man, it, it turned into this huge thing. And of course they wanted it all for free and they had an unrealistic deadline because they were under the gun because the parts came in messed up. Ah, That was a whole thing. We ended up like giving it a hard no because of how unorganized the people who were doing the project were and the amount of risk involved. The the aluminum plates alone were like $10,000 of aluminum. So we had, we had one chance to do it right. Yep. Yeah. And and that was too much for us as volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, even with the machines that are available to me today, I don't think I would have taken that on still. I, I, my machining capability is far greater than it was a couple of years ago when that came up. And I still don't think I would take it on. There's just too much risk involved. Well, and and that's, that, that's, that's the thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think that's where you're going, Chris. Yeah, no, it's just sometimes you have to say no. Like sometimes you have to realize either A, it's not worth my time. B, it's out of my skills. 
mm-hmm. or C, I'm just not willing to take this risk. And those are those are your big ones of like sometimes you're going to have to say no and you're going to have to be like, I just can't do this. And as much as it sucks, sometimes that may be a really cool project, but you have to value yourself more than they are there is like this this comes up a lot um i me and joe were talking about this a little bit even before we started the podcast with um this comes up a lot with my artist friends who yes very much undervalue themselves um i have some extremely skilled artist friends who will do work for exposure and man we're getting really explicit fuck exposure That is such a fucking bad word in my language, and I hate it. Um, because I want to find the country that accepts exposure dollars for rent and food and car. Oh, I'd be a fucking millionaire. I really would. So many of my friends would, because like they 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 get in this cherry picked world where these people will go to them and they're like, oh, well, this will give you exposure. This will give you that head start you need in order to get into the market. No, you know what will give me the head start is being able to make my fucking rent and being able to actually pay my bills and not live in like poverty. That will give me my head start. Working yep. for you is not actually going to make that happen. As much as it makes nice to make connections and as much as it really not is nice to build networks, which is a thing, it really is. Being able to self-appreciate yourself to the point where you can make money is far greater value than anything of that. And that well, and, and, and working, if I tried exposing myself places, I just get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it just doesn't work. And, and the other Please. thing <laughs> that working for exposure does is, um, and we beat on this a bunch, is it sets unrealistic unrealistic expectations. Yep. So, you know, you work for exposure this time and then the next time this place wants to do something like whatever their event was or, or whatever. And they, they contact one of your friends and your friends like, nah, I charge $150 to do that. Um, th- these are my rates. This is what I'll show up. This is what I'll do. And they're like, Oh yeah, well, you know, last time Chris did this for exposure and we, we put his name on the posters and I, I'm sure he got a lot of really great business contacts out of the event. So <laughs> we think you should do that too. Your friend's going to tell him to go fuck themselves probably yeah. because your friend's running a business and you weren't. And then he's going to call you and he's going to say, why are you fucking up my market? Yep. And no, that, that, that's oh. a, that's a real big thing, especially in the art world. Oh man. Yeah. You want to talk about stabbing your own, and like, you may not even know these people, but you want to talk about stabbing your own market in the back is working for exposure because then it's, it does, it sets this unreal expectation. I'll t- you want to know how you do it correctly. The, the, in my mind, this is how you do it correctly. Okay. I'll go back to the website. So the website I'm doing for the group and in the group, there are a whole bunch of people. There's two people individually in that group who are opening a new studio and I'm building this website completely free. And I'm saying like at the end of it, I'm going to present them. Basically I'm going to pay this year, but I'm going to be like, Hey, next year you have to pay this cost. Um, and that's for the server maintenance and like the year, the, the page and like all that kind of hosting fees, all that I'm going to pay for it this year, but next year they're going to have to pay for it. And they're, I'm going to basically tell them that tomorrow. Um, and explain all the stuff that comes out, but I'm basically doing this because I know I can make a good website. I, I can do it. I've done it a million times, whatever. I went to school for this. So what I'm doing is I'm first, I'm putting myself out there. I'm volunteering. So first I didn't set this unreal expectation that people are there, but the reason I'm doing this is because I know there are two people in that group who are going to be opening up their own studio and they're going to be doing their own stuff here soon. And when they get ready to do that, I'm going to approach them and be like, hey, you already saw what I can do. Let me do this for you, and I will charge you a friend rate. And that's that's how you do exposure. Yeah. Put yourself out there as a volunteer and set your own expectations on yourself and then create the market. 
that at least in my mind, that's how you do it. Because like that's a way easier way of doing it and handling it than allowing people to set those expectations themselves. Yeah. I don't know. Nobody <laughs> fucking paid me to make our website. <laughs> I feel Look, like a schmuck. I mean... Nobody, nobody's paying us for anything. Nobody's even sponsoring our beer industry. Um, <laughs> we're not getting sponsored on this one. We, we went too explicit. <laughs> I don't know, man. Rogan's sponsored for everything, and he says fuck for every other. No, word. that's that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I am excited for the Rogan and Kanye episode. Ooh, that's yeah, gonna, it's gonna be a train wreck. It's gonna be amazing. I've been watching Rogan's Instagram account, and I'm just like, these, this is a preview of what this episode's going to be, and it's going to be hilarious. Sheesh. <laughs> so, um, what else you guys got? I'm going to shut up for a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't really have anything. Okay. This seems like a, a nice, natural place for Chris to stop yelling. So, <laughs> thank you for listening to me rant. I, I get to do this one out of every nine episodes. <laughs> Yeah, these episodes are nice and cathartic for us, and I think they're kind of why we do this. The, these are the conversations that we used to have where we would be sitting around and we're like, why did we record this? I'm sure somebody would want to listen to this. And, you know, we were right. Yeah. Uh, people have wanted to listen to us, and that's pretty exciting. So with that, this is Joe with Makers on Tap. Thanks for listening, and uh, keep making stuff. But only the stuff that you want to make. Yep. Absolutely. Have a good week, guys. This is the end of the podcast.